Hello folks, uh, today we're going to try to make you masters of working with coordinate transformations. In robotics we work with coordinate transformations all the time and you really need to be able to understand how to do this uh, almost like breathing uh, when you're working on manipulation systems. Uh, the material that we cover in this lecture will also be covered in Robotic Systems Chapter 3.3. So what we typically have in a robot is a lot of different coordinate systems all over the place. And this is just a picture of the uh, Willow Garage PR2 robot with dozens and dozens of different coordinate systems that could be referred to. And you can call this transform hell. Uh, with robotics, we have to ask all these very complex questions like, if I were to have this robot trying to make this pancake here, it could have a camera sensor and it looks at the spatula, it sees the pancake, uh, there's some sort of displacement that we want to move. We want the spatula to then, you know, uh, scoop up the pancake, and so we need to somehow move this spatula uh, towards the pancake. But we only have measurements in the camera frame. We might know uh, that the spatula is offset from the gripper by a certain amount. We also have some sort of offset from the camera to the head, and we also have some sort of offset from the gripper to the head. And so we want to ask the question of, well, how do we actually move this gripper in order to accomplish this transform? By the end of this lecture, you should be able to have enough information to calculate uh, this kind of quantity when you need to. Okay, so uh, we're going to be talking a lot about coordinates and point representations, and it's really important to realize that there's a difference between the physical point in the world and its representation for the purposes of calculation. So every point that we think about in, in space, if we want to represent it on a computer, it has to be a set of numbers, a vector. But it, those numbers have to refer to the frame in which that point is represented. All right, so the, the coordinates are not the point itself, it's just the representation on our computer. And if we wanted to change our frame, the coordinates should change. And our interpretation of those coordinates should change. All right, so we're going to perform some operations on points through their coordinates, and we need to make sure that we're always referring to them in the same reference frame when we do those calculations. And so it's really important for us to annotate each of these vectors with some sort of information about what frame they're being represented in. So uh, to be explicit, our notation will have the vector form of these coordinates with a superscript of the frame that they're uh, located in. So we're also going to do the same thing with directions. So oftentimes we have to work with displacements, velocities, forces, etc. And those are directional quantities. And those also depend on the frame in which you're considering this in. But they don't, the quantities don't actually uh, depend on the origin of the frame. They just depend on the rotation, the orientation of that frame. We can also do certain operations to convert points to directional quantities, etc. So for example, when we want to have the displacement between the spatula and the uh, pancake, we want to subtract those two points, right, in some sense. But we can only subtract them when they're in the same reference frame. So we can yield a displacement by subtracting the coordinates of the two points in the reference frame that gives us a displacement in that same frame. We can also add a displacement back to a point to move uh, a certain direction and, and kind of displace off to get a different point, but the, all those quantities have to be in the same reference frame as well, as well. We can also add two displacements, and we can also scale displacements, or we can also scale directions. So all of these operations are valid here. So um, it's a bit confusing to think about points and directions working in different ways and having to apply transforms in different ways. And so we're going to develop a technology called homogeneous coordinates, which has been around for, uh, for, for generations. Basically, it allows us to work with rigid transforms in a way that just deals with them like linear transforms, like matrices. And the way that we do that is we add an extra coordinate onto the end of each of our either two-dimensional or three-dimensional vectors, depending on whether we're working in 2 or 3D. And so we end up having a d plus 1 dimensional vector representing our point or our direction. So if it's a point, it's going to be a four-dimensional vector. A point in 3D is going to be a four-dimensional homogeneous coordinate vector with a final coordinate of 1. This w coordinate is going to have 1. And if I wanted to represent a direction, it would be a four-dimensional vector but with a zero at the end. All right. So if I wanted to convert from homogeneous coordinates back to normal coordinates, what I could do is take the first d components and divide by the value w. If I were to interpret a direction as a point at infinity. So a normal point just gets x, y, z just as normal, but if I were to think about a direction, it's essentially thinking about it as a point out towards infinity. So it's like the direction towards that point at infinity. Not, if something's out at infinity, it's not affected by translation. 
So the really nice thing about this is that I can represent rotations and rigid transforms in the same unified uh, framework. So we have these homogeneous matrices that are, we take our normal d-dimensional rotation matrix and if we augment them with an extra row of uh, zeros at the bottom with a one in the bottom corner and a, a column of zeros with a, a one at the bottom. So I now have this r hat matrix which is now in 3D it's four by four and this can represent the rotation of both points and directions just using a matrix multiply. So if I were to take a, a point and rotate it, it's going to give me the same thing as if I had just applied the, value, the, the matrix R. And if I wanted to rotate a direction, it's just going to apply the matrix R. And I'll get a, a homogeneous coordinate back, which has a one in the fourth column, uh, sorry, the fourth row, if it was a point, and it's going to have a zero if it was a direction. Now, I can also do the same thing with rigid transformations, except that the translation component here, this T vector, goes into that column, the, the last column on the right here. So you have R and then T, and then you have a final row, which is 0, 0, 0, 1. Here I'm using block matrix notation. So both uh, regular rotations as well as rigid transformations can be represented in this kind of unified 4x4 four four matrix format. Um, this last row, this 0, 0, 0, 1 row at the, at the end, preserves whether the object is a point or a transform. So that's really nice. So with this, I can think about rigid transforms, rotations uh, as, as just uh, matrix vector multiplies. And I can also think about composition of two rigid transforms as just a matrix multiply. So this is great. I can just now use all of my kind of notation from uh, linear algebra, and everything is not as complex as applying these, these operators. Uh, moreover, matrix inverses are just the, uh, of, of this homogeneous coordinate matrix, matrix is just the same as inverting that operator like we talked about before. Okay, does this solve everything? Well, it solves a lot of things, but it doesn't solve all of our confusion. So it doesn't enforce consistency of our reference frames. We can still add two homogeneous vectors. They're just four numbers that you know may not make sense if they're uh, representing points in different coordinate frames. Uh, if we're trying to add two points together, it's not preventing us from doing that. It's also not preventing us from multiplying points by some constant. So it's uh, really not taking care of absolutely everything. Um, there's some robotic software packages that are able to manage coordinate uh, transforms and points and directions with semantic information to help us with uh, avoiding these programming mistakes, uh, but still you'll have to understand some of these tr uh, semantics of doing transforms to actually be a, a competent uh, a robotics programmer, especially for manipulation problems which have a lot of transforms uh, between multiple different frames. Okay, so let's talk about coordinate uh, conversion. So if we want to convert, if we have some point and its coordinates are represented in some frame A, and we want to find its coordinates in some frame B, how do we do that? Well, we can do it quite easily if we know the transform between frame A and frame B. We're going to uh, give a little bit of notation here. So the subscript A, and T sub A, means that it's the transform of frame A. And then the superscript B says the coordinates that we uh, convert from are from A to B. So if we know this transform, whether it's a 4x4 four four homogeneous coordinates matrix or it's a rotation and translation, uh, then what we can do is just apply this transform to the point PA. Just the application of that performs that coordinate transform. So this is great. We can convert between arbitrary coordinates if we know their relative transform matrices. So a bit about this notation here. I've set it up really specifically uh, to help you uh, write down equations that actually make sense when you're doing these uh, conversions. So if you have a transform, uh, we're denoting it with a T, uh, the subscript is the frame in which the coordinates will be converted from. The superscript will be where the, uh, the frame to which the coordinates will be converted to. The superscript of our coordinates uh, for, for a point uh, is going to denote the coordinates of the point in the frame. Uh, we're also going to do double duty with our uh, notation. And if you have a directional quantity x, then this x superscript frame is also going to denote the coordinates of its direction in that frame. And it's going to deter be determined by context. Uh, if you want to think about this as a homogeneous coordinate vector, it's just going to have a 0 in the last entry. 
If we want to then apply that, uh, this, this notation here, this, this coordinate transform, uh, you have to make sure that the subscript of the t matches the superscript of the x. So basically, here these a's need to match, and then they also, if you can think about this in terms of like the equal sign, the, they cancel out on the right-hand side of the equal sign, preserving that superscript b, which can, then goes into the superscript of the results. So you can also compose different transforms together. So if we had a transform from A to B and then another one from B to C, we can get the transform from A to C just by doing uh, a composition. And so uh, here, if you want to look at uh, how these things match up, you make sure that the subscript of T sub B matches with the superscript of the T, uh, T sub A superscript B. So those cancel out. And then the C gets mapped over to the left-hand side of the equal sign, and the A gets mapped over to the left-hand side as well. All right, so things need to cancel out with the diagonals. Another thing is that inversion uh, does the trick of swapping the su superscripts and subscripts. So if you were to invert this transform, you just get the flip of the from and the to. All right, so if you want to think about this, you can also um, imagine these as using uh, homogeneous coordinates. If you want to do any kind of transform uh, between known quantities and some quantity that you want, then you can perform a bunch of these different compositions and inversions in order to get you there, if you have enough known information. Okay, so, um, but one of the things that we tend to not to really like to do is if we have n different frames, we don't have, want to store order n squared uh, relative transforms between all the frames and each other. So oftentimes we think about a privileged world frame. So we call this w. Um, and w is, these are used so often that we oftentimes just omit w from the subscripts and superscripts, unless we really want to be quite explicit. So if I just had a coordinate uh, x, a point x, then that means x in the world frame coordinate system. All right, and so if I have x is equal to t sub a times x superscript a, that means that x superscript a is the local coordinates of x in frame a, and t of a converts from the local, from the frame a into the world coordinate system. All right. If I were to then do the inverse of that transform, x superscript a is equal to t a inverse times x. t a inverse is actually t a superscript w inverse times x w. So this actually flips from the world coordinate system into the a coordinate system. So this converts from the world frame to the local frame of a. And then if I also wanted to figure out the coordinate system, uh, coordinate transform between a transform A and another frame B, I can just take the world transform of A and multiply it with the inverse of the world transform of B. All right, so this converts from A's coordinates to B's coordinates. And in other words, we can think about the world coordinate system as an authoritative reference for any quantity. Okay, so... Now, let's do the final thing. The final thing that's kind of confusing is that, you know, these coordinates will also move over time. And so we need to be careful about how we understand how things move. So let's say that we have some coordinates of a point relative to some frame. And points can move and frames can move, but let's think about the frame moving at this point in time. So let's say that this point is, for example, my finger, and the, um, the frame is, for example, some uh, frame representing my, my palm, all right? So in this case, my finger is attached to my palm. And if I have this coordinate, you know, some X and Y translation here, if I move my palm, of course, the finger is moving along with me. And so the coordinates of my finger relative to my palm are staying the same, all right? So if I were to move, I still have the, you know, the same coordinates relative to F, but the point is actually changing in space. All right, so this finger is moving as my hand is moving, but its coordinates relative to my palm are staying the same. On the other hand, if we have something else, let's say that we have, um, let's say my, my head is still and we're talking about my eye. So I have my, my frame of my, uh, my, my palm here. All right. My eye has some coordinates with respect to my palm, but as I move my palm, you know, my eye is not changing location. All right, so if my eye is not uh, attached to this frame, it's coordinates are actually going to be changing with respect to the frame. All right, so if I wanted to represent the coordinates of my eye, choosing the, the palm would not be a good representation. So in other words, if we want to store some sort of persistent information, such as something that we've calibrated, 
right? It's important to re represent these points as attached to the frames with which they move. Now, if I want to just do some transient calculations, like, like let's just say at this point in time, I want to figure out where my eye is relative to my hand or my finger is relative to my, my head. Those are just transient calculations, and you can calculate them on the fly, on demand, as long as I know what the relative transforms are between these different uh, reference frames. All right, but I don't persistently store them. Okay, now let's get a little bit more complicated. So let's say that we have a moving point. It has a, a certain reference frame. Let's say that the frame for now is fixed, and the point traces out some curve, and we call this the trajectory. So this trajectory is a, if I were to march forward in time, if it's at this current point uh, at uh, highlighted in yellow at point time t, it has some coordinates. If I were to then move forward to t, time t plus one, it's gonna be at some new point, et cetera. So then it's gonna trace out this curve, right? So pretty straightforward there. Now, on the other hand, if I have a moving frame, then in order to figure out how the position moves in some other frame, for example, the world space, the world frame, which doesn't move, I have to compose the transform of the frame with the movement of the point. All right, so it, let's say that this is my initial frame uh, at time t. I have a certain world coordinates of this point, the point in yellow. If I were to both move along this trajectory, this trajectory is gonna move along with my frame. So if I were to move along this trajectory, in the local frame, and the frame moves, then the, the combined movement of both the frame and the point relative to the frame are going to give me the new coordinates of my point in the world frame. And then if I were to continue to move, then I see that there's this combined movement of both the frame and the point giving me this different trajectory through my world space. Okay? All right. So hopefully that'll be most of what you need for this course. Uh, it's important when you go out in the wild, we're going to mostly use the same conventions throughout this course, and so hopefully we've made the job easy for you. But when you go out in the wild, uh, out in jobs and uh, work with other, uh, say, research projects or, or uh, hobby projects, you need to be really aware of coordinate conventions. So we use right-handed coordinate systems in Clamped and also many other packages in, uh, in robotics like Gazebo. Uh, some other systems use left-handed coordinate systems, such as the Unity system for game development. Uh, also, in robotics, we typically consider Z to be up, but uh, many other, uh, say, uh, video game or 3D modeling packages consider Y to be up. Uh, this is sort of appealing to have Y up if you're thinking about graphing, uh, X being the X-axis on a page, Y being the Y-axis on a page, and then Z being forward. Uh, and in that case, you actually have a left-handed Y up coordinate system, such as the one drawn here on the right here. So our, uh, if you get this confused, though, you'll have a lot of uh, tricky, weird things happening with your, uh, with your coordinate conventions. You'll think that gravity is going sideways and that your robot is falling over. It's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a mess. So be very careful about uh, the coordinate conventions that are being used. Um, another final thing is that it's really important to use the right units. Uh, Clamped and Gazebo and many other packages use MKS by default. That's uh, that meters, uh, kilos, and seconds. Uh, as the default units, but other packages, for example, 3D printing packages, they oftentimes use millimeters as their, uh, their distance unit, so be careful about that. Uh, there have been satellites that have been destroyed by uh, people being careless about units, and hopefully you won't make the same mistake uh, in your future careers. Um, so there's just a few uh, mnemonics, a few rules that you should use to become a master of transformations. First of all, make sure that you're working in the same reference point, uh, frame if you're going to be doing any kind of comparisons or operations between vectors. All right. Um, when you're writing down mathematical equations, use subscripts and superscripts to denote the frames that you're working with. To convert between frames, you have to apply a transformation. All right. And you need to know the transformation between those reference frames. You really need to understand what you're doing when you're trying to map points and directions. So keep in mind that you can't add points together, for example. You can't multiply a point by a constant. Um, and also, uh, displacements don't feel the translation of a reference uh, a coordinate frame uh, shift. So uh, the final thing is that you know use the world frame. Uh, the world frame is probably the most uh, kind of useful tool, the most intuitive tool. Define a world frame, and if you know what the world frame is and you know the transformation of any frame to the world frame, then you can do any of the transforms between any frames. Okay, so returning back to this problem, let's assume that we have all these knowns 
try at home, uh, try to figure out the, this, this query here. You know, given all these nouns, in what direction should you move the gripper relative to the base to touch the spatula to the pancake? All right, good luck with that. I'll see you next time.